The Griffon Diablo 300 is a real bestiality. Hello, my dear audiophile. Welcome to another overdub review by you, truly Pedro Diaz from the main channel, the Audiophilos Elocos. Help us grow this channel so I can get more requests to you. I don't like to listen to things that are better than mine. And I have to tell you a story. When I started working at the Metropolitan Opera as an English hornist and oboist, at first I was always concerned about my instruments and I thought that I should always have the best instruments, that I have to be the guy with the best English horns in town. And if you know my channel, you know that I have several instruments. I got three or four English horns and three oboes because I have to have spares. You know, we have to pay five, six times a week. So I always have to have something that works because the people that repair instruments are not that many and they're not always available. So in the beginning, I would buy once a year new instruments because when the instruments went through the winter cycle, and then in April, I would try new instruments when they came out of the factory. The new ones just feel better. They felt fresher. And that started a slippery slope. The idea was that I always had to be buying the latest instrument constantly. And eventually, I realized that if I really wanted to be the best possible player, maybe the one who had to change is me. Maybe I can practice more or become a more learned musician. So I don't have to rely so much on the tools on the instrument. And the same thing happened to me with photography. There was a time when I was constantly buying new bodies and new lenses. And then I told myself, okay, Pedro, someday if you become a much better photographer or if you become a professional, then maybe you can deserve to buy better equipment. And slowly but surely, I cure myself from these obsessions. But hi-fi audio, that's different. That's something else. Uh, I'm trying to deal with my dog here, Coco. So imagine what it's like to make YouTube channels, uh, videos, and constantly trying new stuff, bringing new stuff here into my room. Of course, I only have a certain amount of money to buy my own stuff, the stuff I want to listen to. So I prefer not to listen to an amplifier or a CD player or speakers that are better than what I have. Of course, that will never happen with the quads. Nothing's ever going to sound better than the quads, right? But when Anthony Carella from Specialty Audio and Vision, who distributes the Griffon products, offered me to try a product from the Griffon, of course I couldn't say no. From the beginning, I told myself emotionally that this wasn't going to be better than what I have, and much less if it cost $20,000. So I gladly said, okay, Anthony, I want to try it. Uh, my friend Dexter helped me bring it up the stairs. We put it together, we fired it on, and this is what happened. I'm not going to spend a lot of time telling you about the technical specifications and how it's made. You know, that's not my thing. I'm here to tell you as a musician how I listen to music with these instruments. So I, what I can tell you is that this is a very special unit. It's a model that's been made for a very long time. It's come in many different uh, incarnations. And the latest is the Diablo 300. 
you can have it with a funnel stage that's internal but also you can have a digital module installed it comes in a separate box but it goes inside of the diablo this is why it, it isolates it it isolates it it doesn't use feedback apparently the amplifier and it uses very little resistors in the volume control as a matter of fact it has a very sophisticated volume control but you know everything in the circuitry of this design is super sophisticated or you can say to me well Pedro you know all this new stuff sounds cool to me I prefer vintage and I'm saying yes that's always an option I mean luckily in the audio world there's space for everyone there's space for the mono lovers for vintage and for the lovers of digital music and new components because the argument of some people in the vintage world is that there was some engineer that lived a long time ago who invented some technology and, and used some special materials that you cannot find anymore. But today we have also modern scientists that may be anonymous, that we don't know, that may have designed a laser beam that can perforate a human hair on the inside. And there's also many exotic materials that are being used in military technology. So I believe that the creation of new technology will always continue, although I do recognize that it doesn't always bring a better product or better sound, but it maybe it makes it more reliable, more interesting, and also easier to use, or perhaps more adapted to the music we listen today. Let's remember that a lot of people who listen to digital music require a wider dynamic range and less noise. And for... Okay. And the motor equipment is the best for that. But let's stop the let's stop the arguments. The Grifo 300 is a solid block of steel, or well, seems to be very heavy, it weights over 100 pounds. It's got all kinds of connections. It has two balance inputs, and everything that it exudes is pure quality. From the moment you turn it on. Uh, you can hear all the relays and you operate all the controls and I can tell you I didn't really want to like it in the beginning it sounded actually a little bit funny because I, I thought it sounded kind of dark or it didn't sound like a stereo amplifier it sounded like something different and I thought well maybe it's cold or maybe it's me but this was a unique experience it was an experience where silence is also part of music. And also last month, I had a gentleman here with his wife that came to listen to the Sibelius speakers from Pell Acoustics. And uh, we made an appointment so he could come listen to them. And I use my tube amplifier from Audio Note, and I also had my quad pass amplifier. But the Diablo was just quietly sitting there. It was off. And, uh, you know, we have also the XA25 from Past Labs. But at some point, this gentleman said, you know, what is that thing over there? That black, huge thing. And I said, well, that's that's something that you really don't want to listen to. Because if, you, if I turn that thing on and I hook it up, there's no going back. You're not going to be able to stop thinking about it. And you will probably will want to buy it. And he said, okay, well, fine. Let's let's hear it. So I turned it on. We listened to stuff, but it was his wife who immediately realized, wow, this is incredible. I can't handle this. This woman sounds like she's singing right in front of me. This is a torture. And how much is this? Quantitatively and qualitatively, you cannot put a price on something that gives you goosebumps. In terms of commercial uh, interpretations, yes, you have to put a price on it. But the way that it gives you goosebumps, that cannot be priced. That cannot be named. I don't care. I'm never going to be able to buy this. And I've made peace with myself that this uh, amplifier will never be in my home again. But I have to tell you, it's my responsibility to tell you that it's probably the best amplifier I ever heard. And I've heard a lot of good amplifiers. 
And you know what else? I recently had a chance to visit Anthony and I listened to the Diablos Dad Mephisto. And that is quite a barbaric thing. It's incredible. But you know what? I, I'll keep the Diablo. I'm happy with the Diablo. Uh, if for any reason you're someone who can afford this amplifier and you're watching this video and you're wondering, should I, should I listen to this? Should I buy this? Well, let me tell you the following. Just like I told you this story in the beginning about my instruments and about photography, my passion, I have to suggest to you to ask yourself, do I know enough about what an orchestra sounds like or what acoustical instruments sound like or a jazz trio live so I can understand or distinguish the difference? Or do I just listen to pop music and hip hop and reggaeton? And In that case, you don't need to buy that. You could just don't buy anything over a thousand bucks. Because a lot of this uh, club music is for dancing, and it'll sound good in most equipments. It's not meditative music. It's not contemplative music. It's not something that makes you go in a trip, and you can distinguish exquisite sounds. If you think that you're ready to improve your hi-fi equipment, ask yourself, when was the last concert that I went to, live concert? How many books have I read about uh, music appropriation? Or how many talks have I listened to on a post about com composers or orchestras or, uh, or famous musicians? Maybe if we learn more about music, maybe we deserve to buy something better. But if you're going to listen to the same five audio file records, then life is not worth it. All I can say is that I cannot buy this, but I do recognize that it is fantastic amplifier and that nothing has ever sounded as good in this place. Because every speaker that I connected to the Diablo just flourished. They sounded like they were alive. Even the Sony CS5 sounded fantastic with the Diablo. And if you don't believe me, I will leave some links with some demos so you can listen to yourself on your Bose headphones. And this is a parapelometer with the equivalent of a goosebump meter. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope that we have a great 2023 fantastic year together with lots of music and that you get lots of good songs. And remember to watch my main channel, the Adiófilos y Locos.